Let's answer this problem, class. Uh, look at the background of the problem. So, Pakistan down. So, on January 1, 2018, so the company issued a 10% take note convertible bond. So, this is an example of a compound financial instrument. So, the face amount is 4 million pesos that matures on December 31, 2027. So, if you take note of that, so that would be 10 years, okay? Now, each 1,000 peso bond is convertible into ordinary shares of the company at a conversion price of 25 pesos per share. So, meaning to say, class, so each 1,000 bond divided by 25 pesos, that will be the number of shares to be issued by the entity to the investor. Now, like for example, if I am the investor, I have one unit of bond. So, that is 1,000 pesos, right? So, per share, the price is 25. So, 1,000 1, pesos divided by 25 pesos conversion rate, then my 1,000 peso bond is equivalent to how many share? 40 shares. So, if, if I decide to convert my bond investment into shares of stocks, so I will receive 40 shares in exchange. Do you follow? So, I will have to surrender the investment in bonds and I will receive 40 shares in exchange. And take note, class, that in this case, interest is payable half yearly in cash. So, the interest is payable semi-annually. So, that would have an effect, okay, on the computation by discounting. At the date of issue, the company could have issued a non-convertible debt with a 10-year term bearing a coupon interest of 11%. So, yung last part of this first paragraph mentions that without the conversion feature, the entity would have only issued the debt of 11%. In that case, the value of the debt would be lower. So, kasi opposite yung effect ng interest rate on the present value. Meaning to say, class, the higher the interest rate, the lower would be the present value. So, remember, yung interest rate earlier is how much percent na? 10%. So, pero kung 11% yan, the present value would be lower. So, yun yung kakumpute natin with respect to sa requirement 1. So, kasi dito, baba ko lang ha. So, sa requirement 1, the proceeds from the issuance of convertible bonds to be allocated to the equity component is how much? So, if we compare natin class yung issue price with the conversion feature, the entity was able to issue it at, the, at its face amount of 4 million pesos. But without the conversion feature lang, how much lang siya may issue ni client? At 11%. So, if we compare natin yung 4 million at saka yung debt if it is issued at 11%. So, if that is the case, uh, let us compare. So, number one, ang requirement. So, lakihan ko na lang medyo yung sulat ko. Or kapalan din natin. Yan. So, number one. So, how much is the equity component? So, we get the issue price. So, the issue price Given sa problem, 4 million pesos. Now, let us compute the debt without the conversion feature. So, without conversion feature, it would have been issued at 11%. Do you follow? So, we'll get the present value class of the principal and interest at 11%. So, kaya lang class, yung interest kasi paid siya half yearly. So, semi-annual yung compounding. Kaya yung interest, instead of 11%, it would become, so, 0.11 divided by 2. So, that would be 0 0.055 or 5.5%. So, interest is 5.5%. And the period from 20 years, it will become, ah, sorry, from 10 years, it will become 20 semi-annual period. Nakuha? Kasi yung original term, 10 years. But since the interest is payable half yearly, so that would be semi-annual times 2. 10 years times 2, 20 semi-annual period. So, PV of principal, so that would be 4 million pesos. So, multiplied by the present value of 5.5%, this one, 
over 20 semi-annual period. So, you can try on your calculator. So, medyo different kasi yung way dito sa calculator ko. So, 20 periods. So, maraming equals. You can use also the shortcut that I mentioned to you before. So, in that case, so that would be 1.055. So, please bear with me. So, 20 period kasi yan. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Malati pa. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Point three four, uh, point three four two seven. Yun di ba yung nakuha niya? Okay. So, 0 0.3427. So, computing ko na rin yung unwitty, ha, para hindi ko maulitin yun. So, 0.3427 minus 1 divided by 0 0.055 plus marigit, divide dapat. Divided by 0 0.055. So, that's 11 point Nine five zero four. So hundred up to four decimal places. So interest present value. That would be four million times nominal rate. Ilan yung nominal rate? Ten percent pa. So ten percent gagawin mong five percent. Kasi semi annual. So times five percent. Times eleven point. 9504 Okay? So pagsamahin na natin. So 4 million times 0.3427 So 4 million times 0.3427 plus 4 million times yung interest 0 0.05 times 11.9504 So together magkano yung total present value 3,760,880 yun di ba yung na compute niya So 3,760,880 So ito yung sinasabi natin kanina class no with conversion feature yung amount is 4 million. Follow? Pero without conversion feature, so sabi na sa problem, uh, at the date of issue, the company could have issued a non-convertible debt with a 10-year with a year bearing a coupon interest of 11%. So without conversion feature, magkano lang may issue ni client yung debt? 3 million 760, So the reason why higher yung convertible bonds is because meron siyang additional feature, yung conversion feature. So, therefore, is split siya ni client at the issuance. So, yung total consideration minus yung non-convertible debt value na 3,760,880, so magkano yung difference? So, 4 million minus 3,760,880 is 239,120. Nakuha? So, this is 239,120. So, itong 239,120, this is the equity component. So, kaya answer requirement number 1, 239,120. So, ang entry dyan ni client, upon issuance, debit, cash, entry ha natin class. So, debit, cash, 4 million pesos. So, debit, discount on bonds payable. 
So, yung discount on bonds payable, so yung difference lang din ng face amount at nung uh, fair value ng debt without the equity feature na 3,768,80. So, 2,3,9,1,20 rin siya. So, 2,3,9,1,20. Kasi ang recording ng bonds payable at face value. So, credit bonds payable sa entry, no? is at 4 million pesos. Pero yung initial carrying amount niya is yung difference. Ang difference is 3,760,880. Tapos may credit dyan na share premium from conversion option. So share premium from conversion option of 239,120. So kaya po Ang question sa problem instead is journal entry. So, ito yung answer. So, ang credit sa bonds payable, face amount na 4 million, pero yung initial carrying amount niya, dapat 3,760,880. So, kasi according to PS32, split accounting. So, separate yung recording ng debt at its value of 3,760,880 and yung equity na 239,120. So, but since ang requirement plus, ano ba requirement? So, the requirement is proceeds from issuance of convertible bond to be allocated to equity components. So, answer natin class, 239-120. So, answer, 239-120. Requirement number 2, class. Requirement number 2, the carrying amount of the bonds on December 31, 2022. So, December 31, 2022, notice yung first uh, issue once natin is January 1, 2018. So, in December 31, 2022 is after how many years na siya? So, 2018, 2019, 2020, 21. So, December 31, 2022, after 5 years. So, yung pag-compute ng carrying amount, there are two ways. We can amortize from the previous carrying amount. Kaya lang dito, masyadong marami kung mag-amortize tayo from January 1, 2018. Kasi, 5 years yon, 10 periods. So, we can use the alternative computation. Ano yung alternative computation? We just get the present value of the remaining cash flows. So, therefore, minus 5 years, ilan na yung remaining? 5 years pa. So, by doing that, we can discount the principal and interest using the remaining 5 periods. Similar lang do sa requirement number 1. Ang difference lang, instead of 10 years, ang gagamitin natin ay 5 years. So, in that case, so, requirement number two. So, carrying amount as of December 31, 2022. So, ang effective interest, same pa rin, 5.5% semi-annual rate. And then, yung remaining years, instead of uh, 20 periods, magiging 10 periods na lang. 10 semi-annual periods. Kasi, ano yan? 5 years converted into semi-annual period. So, 5 times 2, that would be 10 periods. So, ganun lang din. Same lang. So, principal. We have 4 million. Times yung PB factor ng single payment. And for interest naman. 4 million times 5%. So, 5% yung nominal interest rate. Times present value factor naman ng ordinary annuity. Kasi ang interest, each year ang payment, di ba? So, kaya magkaiba sila ng computation ng present value. So, compute natin. So, 1 divided by 1.055. So, 1 period. 2. 3. 4. 5. 6. 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay? So, 0.5854. Tama ba? Same na na-compute sa inyo? So, 0 0.5854. So, again, sa board examination kasi, ordinary calculator lang yung pwedeng gamitin. Mas mabilis sana yan kung scientific calculator. So, ififeed mo lang yung formula. So, minus 1. Divided by 0 0.055, we get 7.5376. So, 
5376. So, yung PV ng principal, computing ko muna this time, 4 million times 0.5854. So, I get 2 million 341-600. So, PV naman ang principal, 4 million times 5% times 7.5376. So, we get 1,507,520. 1,507,520. So, add lang sa PB ng principal, 2,3,4,1,600 equals 3,849,120. So, ito na yung answer natin sa requirement number 2. So, di ba, madadali lang yung problems natin. Dapat is kung tayo. So, 3,849,120. Kasi pag kinocompute ko, parang nadadalian naman ako. Yan. So, requirement number 2. Pagdating sa inyo, parang hirap na hirap na kayo. 8, 4, 9, 1, 20. So, yun yung requirement number 2, class. Uh, hindi ko na ikat, ha? Tuloy, tuloy na lang yung recording natin. So, requirement number 3, requirement number 3, class. So, requirement number 3, so, sabi dito, the amount to be recognized in profit or loss as a result of the purchase of the bonds on January 1, 2023. So let's look at the background of the problem muna to see what happened on January 1, 2023. So dito, going back to the background of the problem, on January 1, 2023, the convertible bond has a fair value of 4,400,000 pesos. Now the company makes a tender offer to the holders to repurchase the bonds for 4,400,000 pesos. The holders of 2 million bonds accepted the offer. So meaning to say, the creditors were asked no, to surrender their bonds. So meaning the company will have to repay the investors. Babayaran na ni company si investors para makancel na yung bonds. So yun yung ibig sabihin class noong repurchase ng bonds. So at the date of repurchase, the company could have issued non-convertible debt with a 5-year term bearing a coupon interest rate of 8%. So meaning to say, the company tried to buy back half of the bonds offer. Kasi remember, ang total offer, 4 million, right? So pero yung nag-accept lang ng offer is 2 million lang. So 2 million over 4 million, that's one half of the total bonds issue. So therefore, the company pays how much? So magkani binayaran ni entity? 4.4 times 1 half. So the entity paid 4.4 divided by 2, 2,200,000. So ang question, in the repurchase of 1 half of the bonds, how much should be recognized as profit or loss? Class, yung i-recognize as profit or loss, limited lang doon sa portion allocated sa debt. So kasi remember, yung component, dalawa. So, merong liability, merong debt. Okay? So, ang binayari ni company, yung buong issue or yung buong liability and equity component. So, out of 2.2 million consideration paid, so we have to determine how much yung applicable doon sa liability component. To compute a gain or loss. So, normally kasi ganito natin kinocompute yung gain or loss. Kinocompare natin yung carrying amount of the bonds to be surrendered. So, in that case, Kailan to? January 1, 2023. So, on January 1, 2023, we compare the carrying amount as of January 1, 2023, nung debt, and nung consideration paid. So, since kakakompute lang natin sa previous requirement class, yung carrying amount ng bonds as of December 31, 2022, which is 3,849,120, ito na rin yung gagamitin natin na carrying amount as of January 1, 2023. Kasi one day lang naman yung difference, di ba? December 31, 2022, and January 1, 2023. So, let us compute the portion of the bonds to be retired. So, dito na lang sa ating 
next page na lang siguro. Go na next page. Create tayo. So, number three. So, amount to be recognized in PNL as a result of repurchase of bonds. So, yung carrying amount of bonds retired. So, out of 4 million, Half yung nag-exercise, 2 million, 1 half. Pero ang basis dapat is carrying amount. So kanina sa previous problem, yung carrying amount as of December 31, 2022 is 3849120. So yun na rin yung gagamitin natin for January 1, 2023. So 3,849,120 times 1 half. So bakit nga 1 half? Kasi out of 4 million, ang nag-accept lang 2 million. So, 2 over 4. Or, to simplify, 1 half. So, 3 million, 849, 120, divided by 2. So, we get 1924560. So, 1924560. So, compare dun sa payment or consideration paid. So, magkano yung consideration ni binay na binayaran ni company to settle yung bonds? So, given dun sa problem, sabi kanina, balikan lang natin given, no? Ang tender offer ni company, 4.4 million pesos. So, magkano yun? 4.4 divided by 2. 2.2 million. Kaya lang, class, ang problem, yung 2.2 million pertains to the entire instrument. Pero itong na-compute natin dito na 1924560, ito ay 1. That only. So meaning, we cannot compare sa 1.924560 yung 2.2 million. You, we only have to consider yung portion of the consideration related to liability component only. So even yung 2.2 million, we need to split it. Kasi yung 2.2 million, Meron siyang liability, meron siyang equity component. So, how do we get the consideration paid applicable to them only? So, meron given doon sa problem natin. So, sabi sa problem natin class, this one, at this date of repurchase, the company could have issued non-convertible debt. So, similar to our procedure earlier, we'll get the present value of the future cash flows using 8% class for a remaining time of how many years? 5 years. So, computing natin. Gawin natin. So, principal, we have 2 million na lang yung gamitin natin. Diretso na natin instead of 4 million. So, 2 million times 8%. So, 8%, ang gagamitin natin interest, 4%. Kaya, bakit? Kasi sa amin, annual yung payment. Tapos yung period, 10 years din. So, itong 4%, ito yung galing sa 8%. Yung fair value ng liability on the date of repurchase. So, ito naman, interest naman, 2 million times 5%. Times yung annuity factor. So, computein muna natin. So, using 4%, 1.04, 10 years ulit ito. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, kindly check. So, 0.6756. Tama ba? 
So, 0 0.6756. Tapos, yung annuity naman, minus 1, divided by 4%, so 8.1109. So, pagsamahin na natin, so 2 million, yung portion retard, times 0.6756, plus interest, 2 million, times 5% times 8.1109 So you get 2,162,290 Tama ba? So 2,162,290 Tapos yung interest naman 162,290 Yung 2,162,290, yun lang yung applicable sa liability. Ako, ha? And yung difference, minus 2,200,000 is actually payment to retire equity naman. 37,700. So therefore, para i-compute yung profit or loss sa repurchase ng bonds only, we have to use yung debt only component. So yung debt only component is 2,162,290. So in that case, that would be 2162 290. So dito galing yung only component ng repurchase price. So therefore, 1924 560 minus 2162 290. So 237-730. So, ano yung 237,730? Is this a gain or a loss? Loss. So, ito ay loss on repurchase of bonds. Okay. So, this time, bakit siya loss? Kasi, notice, magkano lang yung liability ni client? 1.9. Pero how much did it pay to repay the investors? 2.162. So, higher yung payment compared sa liability. So, kumbaga may utang kang 1.9M, ang binayad mo, 2.16. So, higher yung binayad. So, that would translate to what? Loss. So, loss for the purchase price. Kung sakaling mas mababa yung consideration pay, lang mababa yung consideration, 1.8 lang. Gain naman. But this time, merong loss on the purchase, 2, 3, 7, 7, 13. So, kaya ang answer natin dito sa requirement number 3. So, we get 237,730. So, 237, 730, tapos may parenthesis. Okay? So, pasta pag loss, negative, or may nakalagay na loss. So, pag gain naman yan, kaya may gain. So, that is considered gain. So, sa number 4 naman, class, the repurchase of the bonds on January 1, 2023, decrease equity buy. So, kasi remember kanina sa repurchase, hindi lang liability affected, right? Nating what? component. So, actually, nakompute na natin yung number 4. So, yung number 4, yun yung what? Equity component ng 37,710. Okay? So, kaya yung 37,710, it would reduce the equity by 37,710. So, in that case, answer natin sa requirement number 4. 37,710. Okay? Yeah, entryhan natin. Try natin entryhan. So, journal entry on repurchase. So, journal entry on repurchase. So, debit, bonds payable. So, magkano yung face amount? 2, 
million. Tapos magkano nga yung carrying amount on the date of pre-purchase? Ang carrying amount is 1924560. So makakancel na rin yung premium or discount. So meron ng premium or meron discount. Discount no? kasi lower siya than 2 million. Ang ilan yung discount? 2 million face amount minus discount na 1 minus value or carrying amount na return na 1924560 magiging discount. 75 or 40. Ano ang normal balance ng discount? Ang normal balance ng discount ay debit. So, dahil ikakansel na siya, it will be credited. So, credit discount So, discount on bonds payable. So, credit siya 75 440. So, makakancel na rin yung equity, share premium. So, magkano yung decrease sa equity? 37.710. Okay? Tapos may loss, di ba? Loss on repurchase. So, magkano nga yung loss on repurchase na so, na-compute natin? 237. 7.30 O, oh, kapitin natin yung balance eh. 2 million plus 37.7 debit plus 237.730 loss minus 75.440 credit sa so, magkaming difference? 2.2 two, two. So, ano yung 2.2 two, two na yan? Yan yung payment to repurchase So, credit cash ba? So, kasi binayaran yung mga investors ng 2 million to 100,000, right? So, credit na cash yun. Credit cash to repurchase the bonds and equity. So, credit cash, 2 million to 100,000. So, makita niyo, balance siya, di ba? So, balance siya, debit, tapos na yung credit. So, yung story, binayaran ni client yung bonds with conversion feature, pero not the entire 2.2 allocated sa liability. So, may portion na allocated sa equity, so, yung difference yun lang yung allocated sa liability. So, ano po ang loss? Ang loss rather na 237. Okay? So, answer natin. Requirement number 4. Meron na 37.710. Requirement number 5. The amount to be recognized in profit or loss as a result of the amendment of terms on December 31, 2023 is how much? Ano naman itong amendment of terms? Tingnan natin ulit yung background ng problem. So, background ng problem. Ito, last one. On December 31, 2023, to induce the holders of the remaining bonds to convert the bonds promptly, the company reduced the conversion price to 20 pesos if the bonds were converted before March 1, 2024. The market price of the company's ordinary shares on the date of the amendment is 32 pesos per share. Magkano nga yung original conversion price kanina? 25 pesos. Ngayon, magkano na lang? 20 pesos. So, because the conversion price was reduced, the entity will have to issue additional number of shares. At yung additional number of shares na yung class, it should be recognized in profit or loss. Equal to the fair value of the shares on the date of the amendment, which is how much? 32 pesos per share. So, i-compare natin. So, gain or loss as a result of amendment. So, pagdali tayo. Sige, para action na yan dito. So, gain or loss on amendment. So, based sa original terms, ilan na lang yung remaining bonds ni client? From 4 million, 2 million na lang, di ba? Is original terms, yung 2 million na bonds convertible into how many shares? 25 pesos ang conversion rate. Ito yung original. So, 2 million pesos divided by 25 pesos per share. How much? 80,000 shares. Now, based on revised terms, Yung 2 million 
convertible at a price of how much? 20 na lang, di ba? 90 pesos per share. Uh, ilang shares yun? 2 million divided by 20 pesos per share. 100,000 share. So because of the amendment, tumaas ba yung number of shares na need the issue ni company? Yes. So ilan ang yung increase or incremental number of shares to be issued? So increase in number of shares to be issued. How much? 20,000 shares. At yung 20,000 shares na yon, it will be measured using the fair value of the shares, which is 32 pesos per share. So, 20,000 shares times 32 per share. So, 20,000 times 32, that is 640,000. So, answer requirement number 5, 640,000 pesos. Okay? So, in that case, ang entry dyan ni client, debit, loss. Loss yan, class, ha? Debit. So, loss on amendment of terms. six forty thousand Kaya lang ang credit yan, class, share premium lang din. So, share premium 640,000. Okay, so debit loss, recognized to in profit or loss, measured at the fair value of the shares at the date of amendment, multiplied by shares to be issued, pero ang credit mo, share premium lang dyan. So, 640,000.